thank God that the brothers on the rise now. Endless celebrations all in my house. Hello guys and welcome back to Top Bins Football with me, Azza and Cal. And today we're going to be dissecting the Man U Liverpool FA Cup game as well as a few other bits of football news that have popped up today. So Cal, what were your initial thoughts on the game? I thought it was a great game, you know, proper cup match uh, compared to the nil-nil draw in the Premier League. I knew both teams were going to go out fighting. I yeah. think they both had a point to prove after that game. Definitely. And yeah, what a game it was! Five goal thriller. Yeah, like it was so, like it was just so more so much more entertaining than what uh, yeah. than what the league game was. And I knew the way we were lining up with the the, the changing formation. You know, having Bobby and Salah both up top. The Klopp mm. like. Klopp was out to try and win the game. Like, yeah. we weren't just going to play the same old shit that hasn't been working for the last, like, five or six games, you know. Try something new, come out firing, and, you know, it, it did work. Um, yeah. We were just we just weren't good enough on the day to, to beat you, unfortunately. No, I think, I think both teams played exceptionally well, you know. I think it was about time Klopp tried something different after the recent run of form. Yeah. Um, and I think... There was moments in that game where I saw the old Liverpool. Yeah, you know, like that first goal from Salah, that lovely ball through. That's the old Liverpool. Yeah, exactly. That's that's, that's what you Liverpool. see day in day out, well, week in week out of Liverpool normally. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, your games. When I saw that, because because uh, when uh, the pre-game um, show was on with Dan, Louis, and Rowe, I was like, yeah. it's probably going to be three 0 United if we play like we have been recently. And then mm. I saw us playing. I was like, oh Christ, here we go. Like this is yeah. this is something I'm used to seeing with Liverpool. Um, I knew it was going to be a goal fest, though. I knew it was going to be a goal fest. Yeah, Both well, L- Louis, Louis said in that video, like, it's either going to be, like, really cagey or it's going to be lots of goals for both teams. And, yeah, yeah. It, it was the latter, luckily, because it, it was a really good game to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, I think where United won the game was their subs. The subs had so much impact on the game, like, whereas Liverpool yeah. subs didn't. Like, we brought Mane on, and I was like, oh, here we go. Like, you know, this will, yeah. give, them, this will give them something else to think about. And it... it, it he didn't really have that much of an effect on the game, whereas you yeah, bring before on... the game, before the game, you looked at the benches and you knew you just knew that was going to be the case. Yeah, I mean, our bench compared to yours was. You've got so quality. much depth compared to yeah. us at the minute. We've got more obviously when all our players are fit because quite a lot. Well, a few of the players that play week in week out now are normally sitting on the bench ready to come on when we have our full strength squad. But yeah, you know. Um, uh, but- yeah, your your bench made the difference. No, it was always going to, like you said, because you've got more depth in the squad. I mean, you know, not starting Bruno. If you bring him on as a sub, he's got a point to prove. You oh, hundred percent. You're not going to start me, Ollie. Well, I'll show you what I can fucking yeah, exactly, do. Exactly. Do you know exactly. what I mean? And look what he did. He scored an absolute worldie. Yeah, it was a, it was a lovely free all, kick. He put all you Liverpool haters down, saying, "Oh, he only scores penalties. He only scores penalties." And he thought, do you know what? I'm going to go out and score a lovely free kick. And he did. I've not been. I've not been one of them. And I think you can no, say I know. I know you haven't. Because you haven't been one of them. I, no, he is. He is. He is a quality player. And it was a lovely free kick. And I think Ollie said that the training session the day before he stayed for yeah. forty-five minutes afterwards just practicing free kicks. Mm-hmm. And it fucking paid off. Like it was a lovely exactly. free kick. Whether it was a free kick so, in the first place, you know, that remains to be seen. But well, yeah, you know, you've, know, seen, but you've seen him given. You've seen him not given. And Cavani made the, the is, Cavani made the ref think, believe it was a free kick. So. The thing is with that free kick is, free kick or not, Cavani was clever enough to make it look to the referee it was a free kick. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. That's the thing. It's that football experience, knowing when to go down when yeah. you get touched in yeah, certain yeah. areas. And that's it. It's just football knowledge. I mean, if if Greenwood was there, for example, who's younger, he might not have done the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Or anyone younger. He just he knows the game. He knows exactly what he's doing. Yeah. Well, and like so, I said, you've seen him giving, you've seen him not giving. Sometimes the referee just wave him up and say, like, fucking get on with it. But, uh, exactly. you know, and free kick or not, Bruno made the most of it and it was a lovely free kick and you can't see oh, anything else. So it's one of the, I think it's the best goal I've ever seen him score, to be honest. That and, was probably my favorite goal he scored. And everyone was ranting and raving about Poggy. I think he was subpar to be honest with you. I don't think he was he, as good as what people were saying, but the, uh, the awareness to duck out the way of that free kick was mm. probably the best moment of his game. <laughs> I mean, when he got given man of the match, I was really confused because I was when I was watching the first half, I was looking at Pogba and thinking, you're not looking that good today, mate. Yeah. You know, compared to the last couple of games you've had, there was a couple of passes that weren't going well. All the tackles he was trying to do were going wrong. Yeah. But he's not looking good. Don't get me wrong, he, he got better in the second half. Yeah. Not, still not... I don't think he was man of the match already. worthy. But, um, no. 
but yeah, no. no man, the match should have been Shaw. Yeah, I think. like Shaw. I don't know what's happened with him recently. Like the past two or three months, he's played out of his bloody skin. Yeah, well, I was, the commentators were saying he's had. They think he might have had a change of lifestyle or something. Because I remember, like a couple of years ago, he looked always looked overweight. Mm. Whereas now he looks a bit, you know, fitter. And, he's rapid. He is when he wants yeah. to be. He's bloody rapid. Yeah, um, he's absolutely brilliant in the past couple of games, Luke Shaw. Yeah, like, he made that one mistake against Liverpool in the league. Other than that, I can't think of any mistakes he's made. No, he's he's very, very, very good. Um, and you know that's what United need. Like I think, I think bringing in um, Tellez sort of gave him a kick up the arse as well. Sort of like if yeah. I if I want my position, I've got to fucking play, and I've got to play but, well. Yeah. I think the next thing we need to do is bring in another right back, <laughs> because no, no, don't get me wrong. I love Aaron Wambasaki. You know, I, I think is quality. I think he's quality, but imagine him with competition. Yeah. I mean, it's worked for sure. Why can't it work for him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, At the start, when wan first joined, he was incredible. Like, every game was incredible. And then he started to dip in form a bit, and now he's kind of like this. You know, yeah. some games he's amazing. So the bit of competition might just, you know, boost him right back up. Yeah, no, I agree. Quality. I agree. Something I want to see with Liverpool, like, we lack a, an out-and-out -out striker, a number nine, really, because Bobby mm. doesn't, doesn't do the job. So, but, I mean, why not try Salah up top, Bobby in behind, and then play someone like Trent out on the wing? Like, because we've, we've spoken yeah. about this in previous videos, where Trent is more attacking. He's not a defender, really. He hasn't got that no. defence in his game as much as what he should have for playing right back. So, Salah up top yesterday worked with getting mm -hmm. service from Bobby. So, like, yeah, although he's not an out-and-out -out striker, maybe that's going to work more for the minute if we're not signing anyone than what yeah. the current thing has been working. Play someone else on the right, someone like Trent, on the right right, right wing, and then, um, you know, see see how that works out. But um, I don't think it'll happen. Do, but yeah, he just needs do, to experiment. Do you want to take risks like that, though? Do you want to take risks like that in the league? I mean, I think, well, obviously, is, is, trying is, in the is, FA Cup, but not it, in that anymore. Is it a risk at the minute? Because we're not performing as we are, so... Well, to be honest, mate, the way you're going, it looks like you're struggling to get top four here. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm not saying it in a horrible way, but it's true. I mean, you look at City, they're definitely getting top four with the form they're on. Yeah. United look like they're going to. Leicester are looking deadly. You know, I Everton. I said this in the last few videos we've done on Liverpool. I was like, unless we buck up our ideas soon, then, like, not only does the, is the title race gone, but the fight for top four is slipping out of our grasp mm. as well. So... And not finishing top four after a year of winning the league is um, it's, it's not good not good enough at all. And then you're forgetting about Tottenham. They can come through. Even Arsenal, if they wanted to, they probably won't. But, <laughs> you know, you've got all these big teams and if you start going on a bad run of games, trust me, as a United fan over the past couple of years, Aaron, I know how it feels. Yeah, but, but uh, you know, it's happened before. I think I remember last week or the week before, I was watching Graham Souness, um after a game, and he said that uh, we, we've had, we've done this before, and we slipped down to 12th at this point in the mm. season, and we ended up coming back to win it. I'm not saying we're going to come back to win it at all, but you mm. know, we, you can have a bad run of games, and then you know, it only takes five or six good run of games to then get back. Yeah, you know, it's not like the gap at the from the top of the table to us is huge. Like it's what yeah. six six points, seven points, something like that at the minute. So you know, yeah, you just need one of the other teams up there to go on a bad run. Yeah, you know, or us, or us to just start could. performing like Liverpool should be performing, you know what I mean? Yeah, but then is it too late now? If everyone keeps going on these good runs, then... Well, I don't think it's too late at the minute, because obviously, like I said, the gap's not that big, but like it's going to be difficult for us to challenge for a top spot now. Because you haven't, you haven't won a game in 2021. I know, I know. We hadn't scored a fucking goal in 2020. Well, we've not scored a goal in 2021 in the league yet. No, that was the first time you scored in the 2021, was yeah. it, last night? Yeah, but we've, we've still not scored in the league yet. So we just need to work out. And we've got big games coming up, but hopefully that will sort of push us to try harder to just play out of our skin and try and get the wins because we need to beat the big teams to obviously, one, take points of them, but two, to you know instill some confidence back in the squad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just start climbing back up that table again because, you know, we, we haven't been good enough. I think what showed last night with um, your front three is that you need Bobby playing well for it to gel, yeah. I think, because the past couple of games he's been a bit... He hasn't really been there. But last night, like his touches he was making, the 
passes he was playing through to Salah. Yeah, he looked like, like he looked like Bobby of old. He looked like it. the Bobby I'm I was used to seeing like mm. last season, season before. Like he, he like he doesn't score a huge amount, and he's never really scored a huge amount. But when he's on form, other people score. We yeah. score like he gels that front three together normally. You know the passes he plays, the plays he plays. You know what I mean? Like he is the reason that we score as much as we do normally. Mm -hmm. So, but you know, I don't really know what's happened recently. Um, but you know, I, I take positives from yesterday. We looked good. We looked a lot yeah, better than did. what we have done. So hopefully that can then um, transfer over to the league and we can start, you know. Picking ourselves up, dusting ourselves off, and getting back to proper Liverpool form. Yeah. But another thing I wanted to mention about Liverpool was you could tell Henderson wasn't there last night. Yeah. Is because obviously you got Trent and Robbo that like to attack up the wings, and then Henderson always plays that role that fills back in behind, yeah. which not and covers them. So without him, there was no one covering, and we we exploited that left hand side, mate. Yeah, yeah. We All did. game we were down that left hand side. And you could tell if Hendo was there, I don't think that would have happened as much. Yeah, we do miss him when he doesn't play. Um, he definitely gels the team together. Like you, you hear him like where there's been no crowds recently. You hear him just barking at the team, like you know, yeah. calling the shots. And um, you definitely notice when he's not playing. And mm -hmm. I completely agree with what you said. Um, so yeah, um, I don't really know the reason why he didn't play, um, but you know, um, saving him for the league perhaps. But yeah. as soon as we can have him back and have him back in his full capacity in the midfield rather than playing as a fill-in centre-back, I think we'll be playing mm -hmm. a lot better. Yeah. Um, because, you know, we miss him commanding in the midfield. He's done a, he's done a good job at centre-back for the minute, but, but, you know, it's not his position. It's not where no. he thrives. It's not where it's best for him in the team. So as soon as we can have him back in his, his, in his normal sort of holding midfield role, like, you know, that's, that, that's going to drastically improve Liverpool yeah I agree I agree um, so who's your top five for the game uh, right mine's going to be Luke Shaw yep 100% Firmino yep um, Greenwood mm -hmm. because he hasn't been in form recently I think that game would have boosted his confidence yeah goal he played, yeah, he played very well uh, Salah for getting the two goals yeah and Fuck, who's the last one I said? <laughs> oh, and Bruno for the <laughs> super sub. Yeah, no, I, no, I, I think that's um, that's got to be mine as well. I don't think I'd change any of that. Like Bruno, he gets in there because he came on and he completely changed the game. Before he came on, it was anyone's game, and yeah. I think even Benny, like Benny, was saying that this is Liverpool's game before he came on, and he, he soon at his words because that wasn't long before he scored the free kick. However. Um, yeah, he came on, he drastically changed the game and got the winning goal. So that's why he makes the the top five for me, I think, over someone like Rashford who scored and got an assist. Mm -hmm. um, not saying Rashford didn't play well at all. Like He's a, he's a close sixth to get in, yeah. but yeah. Bruno made the difference in the game. And we're almost forgetting that it could have been 4-2 because that lovely cross from Bruno onto Cavani's head. Yeah, hit the post, hit the post yeah. I don't know if it was offside. I didn't. I didn't. I don't think they looked at it because obviously it didn't go in. But um, no, yeah, no, it was it was lovely. It was unlucky not to go in. Um, yeah, literally. Like I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know what Allison was doing. He stood and just watched it. I was just like, uh, mate, like <laughs> you know. I, th I, th I think he thought it was going wide, but no, like it's a powerful header though. Mm, that's what you're. That's but, that, yeah. Cavani's very good for that though, isn't he? Like. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he's close think, to getting think, in that top five as well because, you know, he, he drew the foul to get the free kick that you won the yeah. game for, etc. So. I think he's had a massive impact on our team that a lot of people don't even see. You know, you've got all these young forwards around him and all that football intelligence, you know, rubbing off on the younger players. Yeah. You can see a difference in the whole team. I feel like we, if we had a, when Bailly's playing, I feel like we have a solid spine down that centre. Yeah. You know, Bailly, Bruno, Pogba, Cavani. Yeah. Down that middle. Yeah, That's yeah, perfect. no, it's, it's very good. It is very Maguire, good. Because not Maguire. I don't want Maguire's not a leader. <laughs> no, I don't know. I really don't know why he's still captain. Like, you know, I, I never hear him barking orders. I never hear him, you know. He's just, he, and when he, when he does interviews, he just doesn't seem like a captain. He no. really doesn't seem like a captain. 
Whereas get someone like Bruno in, and you know, you know, you know he's going to lead. You know he's going to lead from yeah. the front. You know he's going to pick people up when they're doing shit. I mean, you see him when he came on yesterday, straight away. Like right, you here, you yeah, here, like yeah, this. Yeah. It's like that's your captain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so who's your man of the match going to be? Oh, it's got to be Luke Shaw. It has to be Luke yeah, Shaw. Like he's been playing out of his socks recently, and um, yeah, I think he he just played phenomenally last night. Yeah, I agree. Cool. So, other football news. Yes. Frank Lampard. Frankie Frankie Lampard is no more at Chelsea. Uh, a bit of a shock. I, I, it's not a shock. It's really it's not no, a shock not. at the minute. Like <laughs> they, I think they put a statement out saying we thank Frank for like all the achievements he's made in the eighteen months he's been there, but recent performances have not been up to up to the club's standard. Um, so yeah, what achievements. Yeah, it, well, the, the, yeah, exactly. This is this is what they said. And I was just like, he's not really done a lot. Well, he um, spent like two hundred and twenty million and done fuck all with it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, That's quite a good achievement, actually. But yeah, he's uh, he's he's gone, and the rumor is that Thomas tu- Tuchel or Tuchel, whatever Tuchel, his name is, whatever name. Um, is is coming in to replace him, which I think will be fantastic for Chelsea. Yeah, I think I think he's very a good there. quality manager. Yeah, like so. Yeah, if they get him, that is that is amazing. Um, yeah, but and he is favourite, so it's just and he has experience which Lampard doesn't have. You exactly, know, so. exactly, and it's just um, you know, it, it Rome wasn't built in a day, so he's not going to come in and they're going to all of a sudden start winning, banging in goals every single game like they should yeah. really be doing. But um, I think he'll have the experience and the knowledge to bring out the. You know the players that aren't really performing as well, like the Werners, the the Havertz, etc. They're big yeah. signings that aren't doing as much as what they should be doing thus far in the league. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, no, I think that'll be um, a really good replacement for Lampard. He just wasn't doing it. I don't know where Lampard's going to end up. Benny was said potentially Newcastle um, if they get rid of Bruce. Um, but who knows? Who knows? Uh, it's just it wasn't good enough um, from Lampard. It's too big of a team for him, for yeah. his, you know, for like such an early stage in his career. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't. I mean, that's like that's like me going to be Liverpool's manager. <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't have a fucking clue. No. Oh, I'll just just go out and play, boys. Yeah. You, know? you do. I mean, go go out, kick ball, <laughs> kick ball, score goal, we win. Happy yeah. days. <laughs> but yeah. Like, yeah. It was way too early for him to be at a big club like that. Yeah, and I don't think he knew, like, you know, he got half a new squad in, basically, and he didn't know what to do with it. Like, yeah. it's, it's hard enough to make them gel as an experienced manager if you're replacing mm-hmm. half your team, let alone as someone with no experience or little experience. So, I yeah. suppose the thing with 2KL, 2 to <laughs> Whatever it is, Thomas. We'll in. call him Thomas. Thomas, the good thing with Thomas coming in, he's German as well, so he's got that German cam. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, German, I was I was it. saying this earlier. Hopefully, he'll, um, yeah, bring out Werner because as much as obviously they're rivals to to us lot, you know, it'd be good to see the mm. players that should be performing performing. I yeah. want to see Werner going out and you know being the Werner that he was back in the Bundesliga. Because as much as I'm a Liverpool yeah, fan, I'm, I'm a getting foot- really excited about Werner. Yeah, as much as I'm a Liverpool fan, I'm a football fan too. I want to see good football. I want to see goals. You know what I mean? Yeah, I want to see teams performing well. So yeah, um, we shall see. We shall see indeed. Yeah. So goodbye, Frank. Good luck wherever you next go to. But uh, you just you just didn't cut it for Chelsea. Um, so, no. Yeah. Might, um, it might come back eventually. You never know. Oh yeah, I reckon he'll either manage a lesser Premier League side or a lower lower Premier League side, um, like the likes of Newcastle, or he'll go back to the Championship. I think gain some more experience and then mm-hmm. maybe. Come back in the Premier a couple of years' time when he's, uh, you know, got that experience. When he's a bit more ready. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, but he's that, still that was... young. If you think about it, for a manager. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. If you look at him compared to someone like bloody Woy, um, then you know, yeah, big old Woy. <laughs> <Hodgson. laughs> um, I'm probably get slated for that now, but it's the way he speaks. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, if you if you look at him compared to Roy, then. Um, He's got years ahead of him, so yeah. he just needs to get that experience under his belt and then come back bigger and better. You know, mm-hmm. I don't think he can say it's unfair that he got sacked from Chelsea. Um, no, 
I didn't, you know, I think he was only there as long as he was because he is Frank Lampard. He's a Chelsea legend, you know. It's exactly. like it's like what was happening with Oli back when Oli wasn't performing, yeah. but obviously you stuck with him and it's, it's paid off for you. But um, I mean, that's what I mean. People just need time. I mean, Frank didn't. Frank was just. Well, Frank had enough time. Him. Frank had too much yeah. time. I think he had. Um, he, that's why he was there so long. As I said, like I think if he was just you know bog standard manager, if he was a David Moyes, yeah. he'd been out the door like six months ago. So. Well, I was listening to what Dan said in that match preview yesterday, actually, which I found quite interesting. Was with United now, you can actually see a change. Yeah. You can see, you can see what Ollie's actually planning now. I mean, last season I couldn't at the start. I was like, I don't know what's going on here, but we can see something happening. Compared to this, is the best we've looked since Fergie left. Yeah, hundred percent. So that's exciting. I think Ollie's all right. I think Ollie will stay for ages. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think we've all debated at times whether he was good enough and whether he was going to stay, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But every single time he had that looming doubt over him about is he good enough, is he going to, you know, keep the job, he'd, he'd pull out a couple of results out of the bag and you know, like, oh, fucking hell, like, you know. He'd always buy himself time, always buy himself time, mm-hmm. and it's paid off. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, yeah fair, fair, fair play to Oli. He's got the players playing for him. Pogba's playing for him now, which Pogba hasn't played for sort of the last couple of United managers that have been there. Yeah. He definitely didn't play for Mourinho. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it's nice to see him coming out and playing how Pogba should be playing. He's still not playing to his full potential, I don't think. He's still not the world-class Pogba that we know he can be, but he's, he's getting there. Mm. So, But the yeah. United team seem happy and, you know... They they seem to be playing well as a unit the majority of the time, so that's what we're lacking as Liverpool. Um, we seem to lack that team cohesion. Everyone seems to be playing for themselves, whereas you play as a team, mm-hmm. which is why you're doing so well. And we're not doing as well this season. So yeah, hat, yeah. hats off to Ollie. He's, he's done a he's done a very good job. Okay, well, should we leave it there? Yeah, I think uh, I think that just about wraps it up for today. So uh, thank you for watching, guys. Uh, drop your comments Thank about you the game in the uh, in the comment section. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, follow our socials, and we'll see you next time. Peace out. See you later.